YouTube, it's Valerie. Um, you've read Stitching in the Barn, which is my little channel about cross-stitching and other crafty stuff. Um, today is Sunday, February the 16th, and I've missed you all. It's been a long time. Uh, I think I needed some time to pull myself together um, after we lost Leanne, as some of you may know, and probably most of you know. Um, Leanne of Lost and Floss uh, passed away on January 24th, which was a big shockeroo because I, I knew she wasn't doing well, but I just didn't expect it to be that fast. So that was really quite devastating, a devastating blow. But I know that Leanne would want us to go on to move forward in joy, and so that's what we're going to do. <laughs> um, in her honor, Jen from Corks and Stitches and Julie from Gulf Coast Stitches have uh, started a hashtag. Uh, Barb and Leanne of Lost and Floss were both going to do this Baby It's Cold SAL. Well, Beth Twist, who is the designer of that pattern, donated a lot of patterns and Julie at Gulf Coast Stitches was selling them for $5 and then all the proceeds were going towards um, this thing they started in Leanne's honor which is to grant stitchy witches, stitchy wishes. So if you put a post up with a picture of something you had longed for like one of your unicorn charts or a, a, some floss you really loved or wish you had some fabric of some type um, they were going to use the proceeds and try and grant a few stitchy wishes. And people caught on to this and just started uh, paying it forward. Like if you saw somebody really wanted a chart and you knew you had it in your stash, people are sending those to the people. Um, just in, in memory of Leanne, sort of paying it forward, sharing the joy of stitching and all the joy that Leanne gave everybody. So I think that's a really nice, I didn't understand it at first, but now I, I get the concept and I think it's a lovely idea. And a lot of people on February 14th started stitching Baby It's Cold. Um, I'll insert a picture, I should have brought it. Down to show you, but um, it's one I stitched uh, over the winter when Barb and Leanne were first starting the cell. So mine is finished. So I'm going to copy Michelle Rudy Farm Girl Stitcher and I'm going to stitch Wintertime uh, by New York Dreamer instead of uh, Baby It's Cold because that's one that Leanne uh, finished beautifully and did a tutorial on how to finish the ruching of the ribbon around the edge. And so uh, Michelle said, you know, that really always makes her think of Leanne when she sees that pattern. And I thought, you know, that's the same for me. I feel exactly the same way. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I went on to 123 Stitch and ordered it, and then I got notification that they are on back order. So maybe other people like that idea too. So I'm having to wait for my pattern to arrive. But when it comes, I'm going to do it in Leanne's honor. Um, so I'm pleased to be able to do that. Um, what else? Uh, we had Groundhog Day and boy, oh boy, he must have, um, seen his shadow because, or whatever it is when you get warm weather, because in Pennsylvania, it's been crazy. We have had lots of rain, but almost every day it's in the mid forties. Sometimes it shoots into the fifties, almost 60. Uh, and then it goes back to the 40s, and then every once in a while it'll dip into the 30s, but it is nothing like it usually is. And every time it's pouring rain, I'm thinking, oh, this should be snow. <laughs> I'm secretly hoping for a little bit of a snow. I'm hoping, you know, sometime in March or some point we'll get a pretty snow, because I love nothing more than to be tucked in my house, watching it snow, feeling like I don't have to go anywhere. I just sit here and enjoy the beauty of it. Um, I guess I'm very privileged because I'm not working outside the house because if I had to get out and, you know, scrape my car and make my way to work every day, I would not be so happy about it. I will tell that truth. But um, other than that, I really long for snow days. It's like, it's like a feeling of um, you've been given a gift, you know, like, hee -hee, no school sort of feeling. You know? <laughs> so... Um, I don't know that there are any in our future. My husband is skipping around celebrating the fact he thinks spring has already arrived. And uh, I'm hoping we'll get at least one good cold spell, you know, cut down on the ticks and stink bugs and stuff for the spring. But we'll see. You know, I'll take what I get. But 
I do I do long for snow. Um, there are lots of new floss tubers out there who are fabulous. I've been enjoying watching some of them. I did not bring my list, so I can't say them off the top of my head, but lots of new ones. Um, I'm trying to keep with my old, keep up with my old friends. Um, I've been watching and watching for market releases. I haven't seen that many yet. It's almost market people. Come on, release your patterns. Um, I've seen some Lila's designs has some lovely ones. Teresa Cogat has some lovely ones. Um, Hands on Design has some cute ones. Annie Bees has one I love. It's called Pink Houses. Uh, that one caught my eye. I'm sure there are others. Um, but I, I'm just, I'm sort of disappointed. I feel like where are all the, I, I, maybe I'm not looking at the right sites, but when I look, I don't see a lot of releases yet. They're waiting to the very last second. And, um, which is probably a good thing because I really was trying to hold off buying stuff until I saw the market releases and last year I just went crazy for market releases and this year it's good if I rein myself in a little bit <laughs> quite frankly um so we'll see we'll see what comes along uh they've got to release more since it's only two weeks to go um because I know shopkeepers like you to pre-order like to let them know I'm really interested in such and such a pattern so they know that's a sure sale for them, and then they, they, they're sure to order that many when they go to the market, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't know if you have been feeling that way, too, or if you think this is typical and they always wait this long, or you've seen lots of things you like already, or I don't know. We'll see. Um, I had a real treat. A couple weeks ago, I got to go um, with Teresa Baird to her quilt, to, not quilt guild, her stitching guild. Um, it's the Delaware Valley Historic Sampler Guild, and I'm happy to say I've, I've joined them. I have become a member, and they were holding uh, a meeting and having a lecture by uh, Cynthia Sh Shank Steinhoff, who is the co-author of the book Delaware Discoveries, Girlhood Embroidery, 750 to 1850. So a lot of you are probably familiar with her. It was the most interesting, fascinating lecture. Uh, it was all about Quaker samplers in the Delaware area. And if you're not familiar with the East Coast, um, Wilmington, Delaware is very close to Philadelphia. S and so the borders, I think the patterns went back and forth and, and some things they had trouble identifying were they really a Delaware, should they be classified as a Delaware sampler, a Pennsylvania sampler? Um, Cynthia is a librarian, so she is a fabulous researcher, and she uh, also is a genealogist. So she had done extensive work on all of her samplers and was able to give all kinds of fascinating details about these women. And you got a real sense of their lives and what they were stitching and when and some personal stories like a lot of the, you know their fathers were big merchants and then they lost their fortunes and then they were shipped to such and such a place as foster children and the, that's where they learned to stay you know whatever the story was it was just it was so interesting and she brought all these beautiful samplers to life and I loved every second of it so I'm eager to get my hands on that book and read her book and learn more 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 <laughs> you know I do want to actually stitch a sampler this year um, a proper big one I haven't picked out which one I would like to attempt first, but, um, you know, I've been going for instant gratification of smaller projects, but I, I feel like I'm ready to move forward with the sampler. And as Brenda Gervais had told the people at the Midwest Cross Stitch Retreat, this is, what is it, the 400th anniversary of uh, the Pilgrim's Landing, and so uh, that's when she dates that they actually brought samplers to the U.S., what we consider the U.S., and so it's kind of fun if everybody tries one this year. So I'm game. I'm, I'm willing to try. Okay. So what have I been working on? Um, I shouldn't call it my homework because I've been enjoying stitching these things, but I feel like they are things that I, I have a deadline and I need to get them done. Um, I have been participating in a couple uh, stitch alongs with the Fat Quarter Shop. So the first one is Quilty Love by Lori Holt, which is a really cute pattern. I love anything that's a quilt motif. And if you've been following on Instagram, 
um, Quilty Love SAL or FQS Quilty Love, I think it is. Um, hashtag FQS Quilty Love. You'll see people have done this in all kinds of color combinations. Like people have done red, white, and blue. People have done different shades of blue. People have done um, reds and pinks and blacks. Or, you know, it still looks Valentine-y, but it is done with different colors. People have done uh, shades for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Since it's just quilt motifs, I mean, there are hearts, but you could make it anything, really. Um, I've seen people have taken the hearts and turned them sideways, which is a really clever idea because then it's more like a pillow shape. Um, what I did instead of that was I added an extra row of motifs. So I just copied the first one and put it over here and the first one and put it over here and the first one and put it over here because uh, I didn't think of turning the heart sideways. But um, I put on two rows of the Lori Holt Rick Rack, which I think is really cute. Uh, and brightened it up, but I was a little concerned that it is so white uh, when the floss color was a kind of creamy white. So I didn't want to put on more than two, so I just did these sort of primitive X's across. And I thought about doing X's and O's, and then I thought, nah, it's good as it is. So here it is. Um, I just need to make it into a pillow, and um, then it will be finished. So I'm hoping to do that this weekend, which is Today is Sunday, so that's only today. I'm hoping to do that today. We'll see if that happens or not. Um, if not, I will fold it and make it look like it's a pillow and post that as my finish, but um, we'll see. Uh, so that's that's the first one for Fat Quarter Shop. The second one is the Bloomtopia um, Stitch Along. Now, Fat Quarter does this every year. They raise money for uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation and their goal this year was to raise $50,000 and they have achieved it, which is fabulous. Um, the way they do it is they run a uh, stitch along. It's usually a quilt block stitch along. Um, so you're quilting, doing a different block a month, I think it is. Or maybe they do two, two blocks a month. I'm not sure how quickly they release the quilt blocks. Um, but this year they decided to add uh, cross stitch. So they're doing it uh, the same I, the same concept as a cross stitch stitch along and it's the Bloomtopia SAL and the idea is um, they ask that if you would like to join in you make a $15 donation to Make-A-Wish Foundation I will put the link below in the description box and then twice a month they release the next part of the stitching pattern which looks kind of like a modern sampler to me so there it is, and the colors are like the quilt, and they are selling Aura Floss or Floss Packs to go along. They're selling these cute little bags to hold it all in, and a needle minder. There's a cute needle minder, and then this is the little scissor fob I just put in the bag. You know, you have to have all the accessories, as Laura and Brenda would say. I am doing mine on 40 count dapple by Picture This Plus, so mine is pretty small. Um, I've stitched ahead part three, which I, I don't think I'm supposed to show you yet, so I'll just show you parts one and two. Um, so there it is, it's cute. And it's going to, because I'm doing it on 40 count, it's gonna be a tiny little spring pillow, which I'm thrilled about. I don't have a lot of spring decoration. So I'm very happy about that, and that's been fun to work on. And it's fun to switch back and forth between the different linens. Like this was um, Dames of the Needle. I think it was a Dames of the Needle. It's Brun Lapin, Brown Rabbit, uh, 32 count. And that's different from my 40 count. So that's, you know, it's fun. It's fun to jump around. Um, I have also been working on my Horse Country Holiday, which is by Artful Offerings. Um, Rather than do this colorway, I told you I'm doing this spring green country sampler conversion, which is much more prim looking, although I would like to stitch him like this someday. But all I have left to finish him are the snowflakes. Here he is. I think he's such a handsome devil. Look at him prancing around there. I just love him. Um, so he's gonna be a cute little pillow too, I think. And this is 32 count brash by Picture This Plus. It's the same, I also have my uh, Holiday Inn by Brenda Gervais on the other other side of it, but there he is. 
So I'm very pleased with him. I just got to put those snowflakes in. And because they're, you know, random and one-off, yeah, you're starting and stopping a lot. So I just kind of put it aside for the minute. Picked something else up to work on. But I, I, I'll, get, I'll sit down. That won't take me long. I'll finish those snowflakes. And then that will be done. So I thought, well, what next? I should pull out uh, one of my whips. And this was from Stitch Mania. And it is... Hands on Design, Knee High by the 4th of July. Or Knee High, I guess it's called. And I had a little teeny star. I think I had started the quilty flag. I had done a little bit of the blue and maybe started one of the stripes or two of the stripes or something. And I am churning right along with this one. This is um, chocolate milk. 32 count linen by Fabrics by Stephanie, which is the called for colors, and I'm stitching it in the called for colors. And that's my progress. I'm having fun, and I think I'm going to copy Deb from Country Stitchers and do some French knots when I get to the actual corn in the corn husks. Um, the corn comes up, and I think she, I don't know if she cross stitched and then did some French knots on top as well. Um, or if she just did French knots, but I thought that was a cute idea and gives it some texture and dimension. So I will copy her, I think, for that. And also, Linda Jo Pretty Southern changed this motif to a to an Ohio star, which I'm tempted to do because of my connection with Ohio. Um, my daughter is in college there. My dad's family has a family farm that's been in the family for over 200 years there. So... Uh, deep roots in Ohio, and, and it would be kind of fun to to commemorate that with the Ohio Star. Just depends on my mood when I get to that point. If I'm willing to take a pause, catch my breath, chart it out, do it, or if I'm just like, nope, nope, gotta keep going, gotta keep going. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little frantic. All right, what else, what else? Um, last time we had a giveaway, um, and it was these two patterns. Summer House Stitch Works. Oh, I think they're coming out with some pretty things, but it's just hints so far. Have I complained to you about this yet on this video or not? I'll have to go back and look. I, I don't know, because I had to start this video twice because I had forgotten to push the button. I wasn't recording, so I'm blabbing away, and then I realized I wasn't recording. <laughs> so um, I was saying, you know, it's two weeks to market, and I'm so excited for all the market releases, and as far as I'm concerned, they've hardly re released anything yet. You know, I wanted some time to make my list and get excited about things, and people are holding back, and I'm like, I really haven't seen that much. Last year, I was like, could not get my paper and pen fast enough and make my list, and I wrote a thousand things down, and I had to, you know, edit some out, and I still went way overboard. This year, I'm like, mm. I've seen, um, Teresa Kogut has some things that look really pretty. Um, I haven't seen the full pictures yet, but from what I could tell, they look really pretty. I think Lila's design has some really pretty ones. Uh, Blackbird design always has pretty ones, but I'm not sure about which ones they're releasing and which ones they aren't. Um, Hands on Design had some cute things. Annie B's had one I loved, the Pink Houses. Summer House Stitch Works. You know, but I'm waiting to see, like, is Kathy Barrett going to have anything? Is Stacey Nash going to have anything? Is, you know, do, does Chessie and me do any previews? Does, um, you know, so many of them that I'm desperate to see. And I we haven't seen them yet, so I'm like, well, okay, I guess I might as well go ahead and buy others. <laughs> I was trying to hold out for market, you know. Um, but anyway, so th this is what I'm giving away. It's the 2019 Fragments in Time very kindly donated to me by a viewer. Um, Summer House Stitch Works, I had number five, which was a meeting house, and number six, which was the herb garden. So number five, uh, the meeting house, is going to go to Rebecca Moore. Yay, Rebecca! And number six, the herb garden, is going to go to Louise Setzer. Yay, Louise! So if you two could contact me, I will put my information in the box below. Um, you can email me, you can message me on Instagram. Um, if you don't hear from me, email me again. 
I'm pretty bad about checking that email, <laughs> uh, but I will get there eventually. I will, I will obsessively check it before I would ever announce a different winner. So don't worry about that. But um, please contact me and congratulations, and I will pop those in the mail for you. Um, what else do I want to talk about? I found my very oldest whip. And this is funny because I have watched Lisa Kindred Stitcher talk about this. And I'm like, oh, I've got to find that. I knew it was somewhere. I knew it was somewhere. And I have been trying to clean up my craft area a little bit. There's a funny story I'll tell you. My son bought a car. And my other son's car had fit into our craft room nicely. But my other son's new car is a little bit longer. And so I had one of those Ikea shelves with all the cubbies in it. Uh, one of the big 12 cubbied one that was filled, filled with books and magazines and fabric. And I had, I don't know if you have seen my older video where I have the dolls, but I had the dolls sitting in the front. Well, when my son was home over Christmas, my husband said, we got both boys here. Let's get this shelf moved so we can make more room for the car. So that meant my sewing area was going to be shortened by a foot, which is not my favorite thing to hear because I'm kind of, you know, crawling around the cutting table anyway. But so they had the manpower, so they thought they ought to do it then. So they went out to the barn and very kindly emptied all my shelves, made big stacks of books and stuff and put it, you know, piles everywhere and folded the big carpet up and pushed the shelf forward and moved the car in and then said goodbye. <laughs> so I was left with all these books and magazines and things to put back on the shelves and all the fabric to move. And it's probably a very good thing because it's forcing me to go through them. And I have realized I do not need all those books. I do not need all those magazines anymore. I watched one, um, or maybe I read a blog somebody wrote and had pictures of their sewing room. They said, I try and confine myself to one shelf of books. I'm thinking, hmm, <laughs> meaning a shelf about this wide. I'm like, I had two big rows of books and books and books and magazines, magazines, magazines. So I have done a big purge. I have some saved that I'm going to take with me when I go to various retreats and I will distribute them. At the retreats, I also found that I have a bunch of duplicates of some really nice quilting books. So if you're interested, I will be giving away some quilty books in the future on this channel because I figure a lot of us are, you know, cross, cross crafters, <laughs> cross stitchers, quilters, knitters, whatever. And so when I have duplicates, I will give one of those away because that's just silly. Um, well, I'll show you what some of the books are. I mean, these are not the duplicates, but these are books I absolutely love. Um, I think this is the newest one by Kim Deal that I just ordered. It just came out. Let me just double check that I'm telling you correct information. Let me see when it was published. Where's the publishing date? Uh, well... I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure this is the newest one. Anyway, Kim Deal is a fabulous uh, quilt designer. I just love her use of color. Um, I love her patterns. Everything she does appeals to me. <laughs> so I always get her new books. And let me just find one to show you. They're all the sort of primitive, yummy, primitive colors. I also love modern quilts. I love the, um, you know, the Lori Holt colorways, the sort of aquan pinks and uh, thimble blossoms. I love all their stuff. Um, but I also love the brim. Uh, these are two that I, when I found I had duplicates of some of her books, I went through what I had and what she's published and these are two I did not have so I, I ordered them. This is uh, Friendship 2. I knew I had Friendship 1 
This is a collaboration with Joe Morton. So that gives you an idea of some of the types of quilts. And then Simple Graces. I thought I had this one and I found I didn't. So I got that one too. Um, this has some applique in it as well. But these are, these are just great books. I just love them. I wish I had, you know, five or six lifetimes in which to do all this stuff. <laughs> anyway, so look for some Kim Deal books as a future giveaway. That will be fun. Um, de dum dum haul. <laughs> yes, I was going to hold off until market, but since I was, oh gosh, I'm getting y'all distracted. Let me go back to my oldest whip ever, which I found. So that was the whole point of that story, which is in cleaning up, I also found my oldest whip that I have. Cross Stitch and Country Craft from May, June of 1987. Ta-da! And I was doing this, I thought, as a gift for my future mother-in-law, because I didn't get married till 91. So this is a few years before I got married, and I was going to do this for my British future mother-in-law who did not like homilies. Well, it's not really a homily. It's actually a Bible verse. It's from Proverbs. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. But I've said this before. It's funny that samplers come from Britain because modern Brits, at least when I was there in the 1980s, tended to not like words embroidered on things. Um, I think they thought that was sort of folksy and cute and quaint and Americana and not British. Um, and so for her, I was going to shorten the borders and just take out the verse and move everything down. So I figured it all out and I went stitching away. And of course it's been 30 plus years. How many years has it been? Gee, let me think. I don't even want to think about it. Well, since 1987. It's been that long since I've touched this. <laughs> but here's what I had done. You can tell how old this is because look, I have put masking tape on the sides. Brenda, Laura, cover your eyes. But here is what I had done. So I had so much of it done. I'd even done a lot of the... Um, Back stitching, you can see in the flowers, I had done the back stitching. Um, I really was going whole hog on this, and all I had to do was finish this border and this one, I think, put a few bees in, and I was done. But I abandoned it, and I think, I don't, I don't think I made a mistake, but something happened, and I got confused about how I was, because my plan was just to move that up to about there, and just do the border, but then I got confused what I was doing in here when I got to this side, or something slowed me down and I put it aside. I also think we were living in Britain at the time and I, we came back to the US and it probably was packed away somewhere and I didn't find it for a while and so I never went back to it, but I really should finish that someday, especially with Lisa doing hers. I feel like <sighs> I need to finish that. So I'm gonna add that to my whip pile not like I don't have enough in there already, but um, it's going to go into the rotation because I think moving forward, when I finish with all of my uh, stitch alongs I'm doing for Fat Quarter Shop, I'm just going to do um, a steady rotation of all my whips. That's my sort of plan for the year. That doesn't mean I'm not going to buy anything, but I'm going to pretty much stitch from stash. Um, speaking of buying things, I'm just going to show you a couple things that I have acquired in the last weeks since I saw you. Um, here is Maria Selby Humphrey from Blackbird Designs, which I'm very excited about. Lots of pretty things in this booklet to do. I really would like to do this drum. I'd really like to do this. Um, here's a better picture of the drum. Isn't that pretty? So that's one thing. This is one I thought I had and I didn't have, so I got it. It's Sampler Hill, Brenda Gervais. Very pretty.
Um, here's one that is a companion piece to my horse country holiday, which I did not know existed until Julie from Reflections Framing was talking about it. She's going to make her husband do it, I think. It's the Wintertide Cardinal, which I had never seen. I think that's really cute. And see, it goes with this guy. Isn't that cute? And I've got this as well. It's Dame to the Needle, uh, Faded February, it's called. I thought that would be absolutely perfect with that. So I'm all set for that someday. Um, oh, this. Lindy Stitches, Stephanie, who's adorable. If you're not watching her, you need to watch her. Um, she's coming out with some patterns, which I'm excited to see at Nashville, and I want to see more than just a sneak peek. But she had a little sale, and I, I've always loved this, so I had to get it. Jane Austen is my homegirl. <laughs> They're coming out with a new Emma movie, which um, I'm delighted to say has as Mr. What's his name? Not Bingley. Mr. Knightley, I think, is going to be played by a musician that my family loves named Johnny Flynn. So I'm very excited about that. Um, here's another one. Oh, Joyous Day, Blackbird Designs. Very pretty. And from Kitten Stitcher, she is now carrying these Stitchy Box samplers, um, which she said were out of print for a while. Now they're back, and I thought they were so cool. Here's a very Quaker-looking one. Um, Sarah Davis Clonmel, 1824. Inspired by the lecture I heard about Quaker samplers. Here's another one, Hannah Gilpin, 1800. There was one there that was super colorful, and I was tempted by that one, but I thought, no, I'm going to go for the monochromatic ones first. Uh, I thought that would be fun together. And one more. I don't, I don't know why I got that. Oh, I got this because I love the verse. If all mankind would live in mutual love, the world would much resemble that above. I thought that was really nice. Sarah Dodson, 1782. This is from Samplers Forever. Ain't it the truth? Mm. Live in mutual love. Easier said than done. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, and then this is totally copied from Farm Girl. I just love this pattern when I saw it on her channel. Barbara Anna Designs, Love Never Fails. I've always liked that. And I finally pulled the trigger on that and ordered it in the fabric. That it calls for, which is... <laughs> Dirty Linen from Zweigart, 32 count. So hopefully it'll come out as cute as that, because I think that's darling. It has a real fractory feel to it, sort of primitive folk art. I think that's darling. And one other thing about uh, Farm Girl, uh, I'm alerting you to a new tutorial she's put out about how to make your own scissor fobs and the red keeps, which I am thrilled with because I remember at the beginning of the year, that's what I said. That was one of the things I really wanted to get going on. I want to do a sampler this year. I want to teach myself to make um, vinyl fronted bags. And I would like to learn to make scissor keeps and thread, thread keeps and scissor fobs. So I haven't watched it yet. I did see her little Instagram story, which looked great. I was taking notes on that, and she gave a ton of information, but um, I'm sure that the video is just as good, so I'm excited to watch that. Um, what was that? Oh. Uh, I'm just checking my notes. Okay, the last thing that I'm going to talk about is next time's giveaway. We had an interesting story, and Carol Saltbuck Stitcher, I don't think you watch my videos, but if you do, you will not like this story. Um, my husband and I were sitting up in bed reading, 
and he glanced down on the floor and in marched a little squirrel into our bedroom. And we shrieked and he jumped up and the squirrel ran downstairs and he barricaded it in our dining room, which is where I'm sitting now. And we opened, he walked around outside and there's a door that goes out to a patio and he opened that door and we left it like that. Of course the house was freezing when we were doing this, but um, we thought, oh phew, the little squirrel has gone out. And we were thinking, how on earth did he get in? And then I was thinking, well, I had gone grocery shopping and I probably had pulled up to the house and left the door ajar and was carrying groceries in and out. And the squirrels like to play all around that area. So they pro he probably just dashed in. And then my husband was worried because he was thinking, I hope this isn't a mother squirrel who's like making a nest somewhere. But anyway, we thought, oh, phew, that was scary and hor horrible experience. Well, we're lying in bed <laughs> the next night and we heard crash. Like, oh my God, he hid. He must have hid because we had gone in the dining room and didn't see him and didn't see any damage, but he must have hidden somewhere. And so he had not actually gone out. It wasn't the next day, it was that evening. It was the same day, but um, we realized he was still in the house. So we went down and my husband put up the barricade. Luckily we have a folding screen and my husband put that across the door and we opened the door again and then we made a lot of noise and shone flashlights and things around to try and scare him out. So. This time he actually did leave the house. So we have not seen the squirrel or heard from him since, but um, that was quite uh, quite an adventure. Because I was telling uh, Barb of Lost and Lost the story, and she thought I meant um, my husband shrieked and ran downstairs to the dining room. <laughs> no, we shrieked. The squirrel ran down to the dining room. Anyway. In honor of this, uh, the pattern I'm going to give away next time is a little one by Brenda Gervais. It's October Feast, and it features, ta-da, a squirrel. So if you would like to have October Feast, um, tell me if you like, I was going to say, fall stitching, or, you know, if you like to stitch for Halloween and fall if that's one of your favorite stitchy times or not. But maybe that's a silly question. Anyway, that'll have to do. <laughs> so there he is in all his glory. He looks pretty cute there, but he was not cute when he came trotting into our bedroom, I can assure you. So I hope I've given you some fun inspiration. I hope you get lots of stitching done. Uh, I hope the weather is kind to you wherever you are, and I wish you all good things. Till next time. Bye.